Do you mind? I'm trying to shoot a video here. This is my old Carhartt J97 Detroit jacket. I bought this thing when I was uh, in my last few years as a mechanic, and then I wore it all through my apprenticeship and into being a journeyman uh, as an electrician. But then Carhartt redesigned the Detroit jacket and added a bunch of features, which a lot of people felt took away from the original charm of the thing. And if you go online right now, you go on eBay and you search for Detroit jacket, J97, original Detroit jacket, you'll find a lot of models that in good condition, not even perfect condition, are getting north of 200 bucks. So the demand is definitely there, but there really wasn't anything that could step in and take the place of the original. The, uh, right off the top of my head, the Dickies Eisenhower jacket was sort of one, but we were really left wanting until now. This is the Heat Straps Workhorse, a mid-weight work jacket, which is a collaboration between the two firefighter brothers behind Heat Straps and myself. And while it might resemble the Detroit jacket, it improves upon that jacket in every way. First off, every component in the workhorse is sourced in the USA. 10 ounce wax canvas from New Jersey, 100% pure wool lining from Connecticut, solid brass YKK hardware from Kentucky, and all put together in the Heat Straps New Jersey factory. The design is pure workwear, meaning that function takes priority over looks, though I still think it looks damn good. There's a bi swing back, which is a must for full range of movement. This costs a little more to manufacture, but if you're actually gonna be working in this thing, it can't be restrictive. The main seams are triple stitched where you need them and double or single stitched where more flexibility is in order. The fit is designed for mobility and gives extra room to layer. So just for reference, I'm wearing a medium here. Make sure to check the fit chart. Now, just a word of warning, this material is still pretty stiff. It took me a good week for it to start to conform to my body. Now, it'll come out of the box, and honestly, when you put it on, it looks more like the jacket is wearing you rather than the other way around. And the thing that I noticed was that the shoulders seemed like they were almost kind of squared off, like 80s shoulder pads. It took about a week, but they started to droop down and uh, conform to your body as your body heats it and it starts to mold to you. So it actually looks better with time and age, as most great things do. Now let's talk about that lining because it is pretty special. American Woolen in Stafford Springs, Connecticut made up this beautiful lightweight wool that almost resembles denim. It's a perfect complement to the tan waxed canvas, but also offers some unique benefits over polyester or cotton. Wool is antimicrobial, stronger and warmer than cotton, and this one is a lightweight with a pretty open weave, making this a solid three season jacket, perfect for spring, fall, and those chilly summer mornings. The wool doesn't extend down the arms, however, since a slippery material works better in this location for layering, so heat straps went with a New Jersey sourced polyester instead. Now the pocket layout is very, very simple with one zippered chest pocket and two large hip pockets. Now the whole design idea behind these lower pockets was they're supposed to serve two purposes. Number one, give you a place to stick your hands when they're cold, but number two, act as sort of an impromptu tool pouch when you need it, which is why they, they extend all the way from the zipper all the way to the side seam. It's a huge pouch that you can use to put your tools in. And when we were talking about how we were gonna design this thing, the idea had come up to line them in fleece for comfort and warmth when you put your hands inside of them. But then I thought, you know what? No, it's a three season jacket. And when I put stuff in my pockets, a lot of times I have grease, WD-40, oil, all kinds of stuff all over my tools. And I don't want to get grease inside of a fleece lined jacket. It's just not cool to get grease in your fleece. Inside the coat is an open topped phone pocket on the right and a zippered pocket on the left. There are two snap waist adjusters which allow you to cinch down the jacket a little or open it up when you're layering. And there are also two snaps on the sleeve to customize the fit to your liking. The main zipper is a chunky number 10 YKK, which might be a little overkill for a three season jacket, but you definitely don't have to worry about it breaking, that's for sure. The chest zipper is a lighter gauge with a pull tab which hangs down naturally and it's easy to pull even with gloves on. The collar is available in the black corduroy you see here or in the same wax canvas as the rest of the jacket and it really depends on which look you prefer, old school workwear or a simpler rugged aesthetic. Now myself, I'm an old school guy. Now that's all the construction details out of the way, but how is this thing to actually use? Now keep in mind, I'm definitely biased. My name is on this thing and I helped design it, so take my word with a grain of salt. But I found that it tends to just get out of the way. You put it on in the morning and there's nothing that's burdensome. A lot of times you have a lot of pockets, a lot of flaps, a lot of things like that, they get in the way. 
I'll give you an example. I found a lot of times that when I wear work shirts, I'll tend to put my cell phone in the chest pocket, right? So I like the idea of having a chest pocket right there. Now I don't wanna open up a flap to put my phone in the pocket, which is why we went with the zippered pocket rather than one with the flap on it. And so you could put that in there and the pocket is actually deep enough that you can zip it closed, even with a full-sized iPhone Pro Max or whatever this big thing is called. You can still put it in there all the way and zipper it shut. Little things like that. Also, I love the idea of giant dump pockets that are easy enough to put your hands in, but I can also stuff full of things because a lot of times when you're doing work, you're not exactly right next to a toolbox. And so you have to be able to carry all your stuff up there with you. I don't want a whole bunch of pockets to do that. I just want a couple of really big ones. So those things work very well. Now, of course, there are alternatives, and I don't want to steer you towards something that you have no use for when something else actually might be a better fit for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of options. Huh, you like that? You see my, I got a pretty nice rack. So uh, this here, this is the original J97. You can still find these things on eBay. As I mentioned, this was the one that started my love for this whole idea of a short hemmed, just tough as nails jacket that does everything. You can definitely see the resemblance, it's a little bit different, uh, but the resemblance between this and the workhorse. You can still find these, but they are starting to get really expensive, north of $200 on eBay. So these are an option, but you know, not exactly readily available. The other option is, this is the new Carhartt Detroit jacket. Now this is not the J97. These are, I forgot what the, the actual model number is of these. You could definitely tell the difference though, because these have a drop hem. They also have, um, they've done away with what they would call the Detroit cuff, which had this sort of circular. If you look at this one here, this has a, it's hard to tell, but there's a stitch line that goes on a gentle arc there. It's really nice. They did away with that there for a regular cuff. The lining is softer, um, made in Mexico. Still a great jacket and everything like that. I just think that this lost a lot of the charm of the original J97 and the ones that came before that. Now, that's about 80, 90 bucks, I think. $100 if you go with the big and tall sizes. These are not really apples to apples though because they're not waxed. When it comes to wax jackets, you have stuff like this, the Flint and Tinder wax trucker jacket. This is the flannel lined waxed trucker jacket. This is about 300 bucks, I think. It's about 298. And, and you know what? This actually has a lot of similarities to the workhorse, where is it, you know it's a wax jacket. It's made in America. They even list the components right there as, as to where the components are sourced. The difference is that this is seven ounce, so it's a lot thinner. It actually feels more like a shirt or a very very light jacket than uh, the workhorse. The other thing is this doesn't have a zipper. This has buttons, which is okay, you know. But I found that buttons just don't really work very well for work wear especially when you're lifting things up against your stomach or putting things down or letting yourself down or whatever, these tend to get hung up. So good looking jacket, no doubt. Also, there's a lack of gussets in the back here. So the by swing back for mobility, this again is really just more like a shirt than anything else. Good option and it might be better for you. Another one, this is the, the legendary Ship John Wills jacket. This is, first of all, it's getting close to $600 now. And getting one is, is just crazy. I forgot how long or how far out they are. I think 2026, 2025, something like that. This is made out of similar material. As a matter of fact, I believe this is from the same factory that makes the 10 ounce on uh, the workhorse. This is uh, the 24 ounce uh, uh, fabric, which is just like, it's real. you can see, like, look, it looks like it's frozen. It just doesn't move, right? It doesn't drape, and, and that's okay. Sometimes that's what you want. This does have a by swing back. Um, it's not as deep, but it still definitely counts, and that absolutely helps with mobility. A lot of components on this are just beautiful. It has a zipper and a storm flap. All of their brass here, um, their custom made brass. This is the version one, so that means that it's not lined. The new one has a cotton lining to it, which is cool. Uh, but that's the Wills jacket, which I always thought was you know, I, I asked this question during my my review of this too, which is, is that workwear or is it just meant to look like workwear? And uh, and it's actually sort of a fashion piece because it's trim. This is a, a large and it fits me really trim. Now, this is the workhorse right here. Just so you can see as a comparison to these, it's still stiff, much stiffer and much burlier than the Flint and Tinder, which like I said, this is really more of a, you know, I think when you see them side by side like this, 
it starts to illustrate what I'm talking about. Still stiff, 10 outs, um, 10 and change, I think. By swing back, these are, are very, very deep. And, and it actually kind of combines in a way the three that I showed you, you know, the ship John Wills, the wax uh, trucker jacket, and the old J97 into one jacket, which I think, I don't know, to me, this really just hits all the, the high points of the ones that I mentioned. Now, there's a couple other brands out there. One of them is Chiano Farmer Denim. I know they have one uh, that really starts to get up there in the $500 mark, especially when you start adding like a warm liner and stuff. I think it's called the Field Hand, really nice stuff, made in America, but still very expensive. And then finally, another brand that I haven't checked out yet is called Tin Duck Denim. They also have a wax trucker jacket, which is available in either the 24 ounce or the 10 ounce fabric. Has two chest pockets, two hand warmer pockets, no gussets in the back, and I believe it's a snap closure in the front as well. And that one, I think when you kind of option it out, gets into the lower 400s, 425, something like that. So. Depending on which one is best for you, I'm not saying that this workhorse is gonna be the end-all be-all for you. I love it, but you know, depending on your needs, your situation, your build, you may want something different. Now, I also really feel that this material hits the sweet spot between comfort and durability. There are definitely jackets that I've worn in the past, I'm thinking of the Flint and Tinder Wax Trucker, which feel more like a shirt than a jacket. And then there are definitely sh jackets that I've worn where it's like, this is like a suit of armor. That's the way the heat straps chief coat is. That's the way the ship John Wills jacket is. That that 24 ounce waxed canvas that or, or twill or whatever it is, that stuff is basically just, you're never gonna break through it. It's almost a bit too much. This is a very good compromise. And it, it, it's almost kind of spooky how much it reminds me of my good old trusty J97. Now the workhorse is only available for 100 units. And I'll be honest, I'll be honest with you. What happened was, <laughs> Now this collaborative workhorse jacket is available in only a limited quantity and that's 100 units. Basically what it is, just to be completely transparent with you, is that we ordered just enough material from American Woolen to do the lining for 100 jackets. I figured that'd be a good round number and right now there's no plans to bring this model back. So when they're gone, they're gone. So if you think it's something that you want, go ahead and click grab one right now because I don't know how long they're gonna be around. Check that fit chart. Get yourself a, a, a trustworthy companion that will be with you no matter what you do and look better years from now than it does today. Awesome stuff. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.